Welcome to another episode of the YEN podcast where I bring on entrepreneurs at the moment from all over Glasgow, but it's going to be expanding UK wide, nationwide very, very soon. I'm excited by the guest that's in front of me today, very close friend, but also someone that is just smashing it beyond belief within business. Lewis, you want to tell the, the audience, uh, the listeners a bit about yourself, mate, before we get into things? Unreal. I love getting told I'm smashing it <laughs> <laughs> when sometimes I don't feel like I'm doing that myself. Yeah. Um, Name's Lewis, founder of the Peak Performance Project. Um, we are an online coaching company that uh, specifically dives into what we've created the syllabus of, the core four, physique, productivity, purpose, and uh, performance. And we help uh, men and women, don't have a lot of women, but more more men, um, what we like to call eradicate the shit cycle. Mm. So essentially, break through limiting beliefs, bad habits, and... Uh, essentially behaviors that are holding them back from being who they want to be and step into essentially what flow state is, peak performance and build a world-class physique that they can be proud of and essentially just dominate and life, become fucking savages. Love that, And uh, feel good doing it, look good doing it and live a life in their own terms. Too right. And it sounds also from coming to your, one of your events that you've done pretty much all of that yourself in terms of like you've done it for your um like your own like physique you went through that same process um and then created a process that others could then go on and replicate yeah you know, and smash it's, at the park it's like the the program is almost like an extension of me hmm. like i done the physique part when i was younger i got myself in great shape and i was like okay this has opened the door to the next steps like fitness is like a gateway drug to personal development so i got in great shape and i was like right what's next okay productivity i need to optimize my time better because i was getting busier i started liking getting up earlier, go to bed at a certain time, having more efficiency and effectiveness with like my time and self-management. So I was like, okay, productivity comes mm -hmm. second. And then I was like, well, I'm efficient. I've got a good body, but I still want to feel like an athlete. So I want to perform like physically and psychologically at my best. So performance stepped in mm -hmm. and I started running, started ex like exploding different facets, different areas, different realms of fitness, yep. not only from standpoint of push my body, but my mind mm -hmm. as well. Um, tapping into the areas like resilience and just becoming a better person that way. So like my values, my standards, non-negotiables were like extremely dialed in. And then I was like, something's still missing. Yeah. Like what what is what is still missing? But that was purpose. I was like, why am I actually doing this? You know, I'm not just doing it to look a bit better. Like I always used to say, I wind me up with this, but like to get a higher caliber of bird. Like I bet I'm not just doing it to to look good. Like for my own <laughs> narcissistic yeah. um, wants and needs. But it was like, there has to be an element of purpose. There has to be a reason why you're doing what you're doing mm. in any element of life. And it's like, if you can get clear on who you are, what you want and what success not only looks like, but feels like, that's when you can have this almost North Star, this mission, this vision behind what you truly want, what you do the day to day yeah. to amount to over a period of time. So it's like, yeah, it's process driven, but a very outcome driven as well. It's like, there has to be a fucking goal. Otherwise yep. you're just pissing the wind. 100% man. Why is it you're doing the peak performance project then? So it was, I had to be bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It was like just, it was Lewis McFarlane coaching. It was team LMC yeah. and I found the bottleneck was myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I found, you know, I could take on clients. I could push, push, push and get to a point, but it was always me, my energy. It was like, I was just the only one banging the drum. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create a container that was bigger than me where people can come on board and have different areas of support yep. and success from having more coaches involved. We've got big Marco, we've got Adam, we've got Amy working behind the scenes. So it's like, we're a team now. Yep. And peak performance now had to be, as I said, bigger than what it used to be brand does, like the program's name, Physique mm -hmm. Mentorship. It was still very tied to like some yep. body image. Whereas once we kind of departed from that ethos, it opened the realm to like different areas of what someone could get from this program from this project you know yep. it's like there's not an end date to it it kind of like comes on and it's like it can keep going and going yep. and going there's just so many levels to it because someone comes on as we say we we get them in great shape like that's we, i kind of take them through my journey yep. we get them in great shape first some people come in in extremely good shape already they maybe want to run their first marathon mm. you know they maybe want to become a better partner improve their relationship become more present yep. like reach an element of flow and remove like the stress and pressure from not fitting in it's mm -hmm. like we, we give them that network yep. you know um but there's just so many different levels and realms to what peak performance now offers because if you look at if you type in peak performance online and actually find what it is it's just reaching flow state yep. you know and finding flow 
within your own given values so you can operate a standard that you feel is aligned with your integrity yep so it's like we want to give people that opportunity to feel their best mm. no matter what yep. and that kind of always opens doors for them to reach higher and higher and higher levels mm. well past just getting in good shape yeah couldn't agree more man well, well we'll run it back to the kind of start of your journey within i guess like business um there was a story that you spoke to him about when you were working 70 hours a week between two gyms um really in between things but also just working your, your ass off pretty much mm-hmm. um one how did you even get to a stage of you know 70 plus hours and then also what then changed for you to start running what you would be classed as probably like a proper business as opposed to you just working and um, constantly it's like it's like a mad story but it was like let's throw as much shit at the wall as possible and see what actually works and sticks you know so i was working as a fitness instructor a fitness instructor in like a leisure center you yeah. know around north ayrshire so i was getting to know different people from different gyms and obviously I stayed in North Ayrshire as well um and one thing Adam who actually works for me now and this is like throwback six years he was like you were the only instructor that would come up and correct my form you're the only instructor would ask how my day is going it's like isn't that what you're just meant to do yeah you know so I've always had that in my mind like if you're in the fitness industry be willing to help be willing to serve and go above and beyond for that because I'm just so passionate about fitness you know that's that was my first ever purpose that gave me the platform to be who i wanted to be so i just started navigating and i was on i wasn't on a contract so i was just i was just given shifts at the start of a week and i had to just operate around the whole in our fair share mm-hmm. i used to just drive to different gyms different gyms and just work whether it be from five in the morning till midday and then drive to another gym to work in the evening yep. so i was on this kind of weird kind of workflow with that but as I built myself up in there, I had good connections elsewhere, yep. you know, and I eventually had moved to Glasgow and started working on a gym snap fitness as well. Cause I wanted to start pursuing personal training. Yep. Start, I thought I'd like, I'd get paid for my work cause mm-hmm. I'm good at what I do. So I started training at a gym snap fitness, which was horrific. It was so bad. Um, poorly run gym management was, was dreadful. But I was just a very small fish in a big pond. I was, I could see the other coaches, other trainers charging X amount per hour. And they had all these clients. I was a, the fresh baby in the yeah. gym. And I was like, well, I'm a fitness instructor. And I also had like, at the time, my, my Instagram, I was selling programs online for like 40 pounds, 50 pounds, 60 pounds. And yep. you know what? Give myself credit. They were getting results. Mm. So that was like my first wee toe into the online world. But at that time, I was like, I'm still working in North Ayrshire, working in Glasgow living in annie's land um which is on the west end of glasgow so i was like navigating between them and then eventually left that fitness started working in Southside, a place called yep. train mind body soul and i was one of the head coaches there and that was really good they they, they started giving me clients mm-hmm. you know they were the really good mentors for me at the time and i felt really seen and heard and they allowed me to like be myself in that gym environment and they were scaling their gym they were refurbing it and stuff so i was part of something bigger than me for the first time really which was amazing. Um, so I appreciate those guys, uh, Johnny um, and Big Craig, legends. Um, but then off the back of that, I got an offer um, to run my own gym. Um, this this woman down in North Ayrshire had a facility. She's like, I can pretty much just rent it to you. Mm. I only use it on X, Y, Z days. You can have it the other days. Mm. So I was like, okay, that's another gym. So I started working the leisure facility, yep. Glasgow, running my own space. I know still working in Glasgow. Um, so I started going between all four. Yep. So I going between all four. I started building up clients in my own gym yep. and it trained my body soul. And I slowly started dropping my shifts at the leisure facilities mm. um, while I was running the wee online thing as well. But what the day used to look like, which was which was fucked. So wake up in the morning, Annie's land, drive to Snap Fitness, 5 a.m. start till 12 skateboard from city center to Clydeside drive to North Ayrshire work from maybe two till six in my facility and then go for the six o'clock till close finish at K Leisure and I would just I would just rinse and repeat that every day every fucking day um, for as long as I could and you know what it was kind of working but the amount of caffeine I was consuming 
and even at that time i was in a bad headspace i was staying staying in an apartment i just kind of moved out i was staying with uh one of my best mates still one of my best mates now and another guy that was just super toxic he was going through a lot of his own psychological problems and stuff at the time and the housing environment was extremely tough to yep. like flourish mm-hmm. and so i was always trying to avoid going home yep. hence why i was overworking because yep. my environment was so poor and toxic and mm-hmm. um, so i was still smoking a lot of weed at the time as well you know because i was just overworked yep and i was using that to almost de-stress mm-hmm. so i was like you know what i need something so i went in our bodybuilding show as well so I fired that on top of it as well. <laughs> and amongst all like all these different areas of work on smoking weed like a fucking like Snoop Dogg, <laughs> trying to serve these clients and just burning myself into the ground. Like something was happening. Like I was building something, but I didn't even know what I was building. I was just working relentlessly all hours of the day and just, just saving money, saving money, saving money. I was like, this is the first time I've ever been able to save money because yeah. usually like i was in a bit of debt before i started coaching um i was just working from bar to bar and stuff like that just yep. just no real focus i was just working on my own self mm-hmm. my own training and stuff so i was kind of like you know grateful for what i had but like super confused as like <laughs> is this what what coaching is yep. like just being the busiest stressed out mm-hmm. fool there possibly yep. could be and eventually that did lead to uh some burnout as you can imagine but yeah. it wasn't until you know i'd i'd got myself stead like steady with my own clients so yeah. i could start dropping shifts and hours elsewhere so i was only working between the two gyms over time yeah um thank god because if i if continued doing that would have been fucking right yeah. i would have left the industry yeah, sooner yeah. than i got into it yeah you know um around about that time though because i was still still stressed super busy what then what, what actually happened is like that was kind of leading into the pandemic after i'd competed in bodybuilding that was said and done well like the fucking cumbernauld classic or some shit like some shitty fucking show that i prepped for i didn't have a coach for i dieted myself into the ground again while doing all that so i was just yeah. very vulnerable i was mm-hmm. super dieted stressed out my nut i had a man bun at the time <laughs> i was just going through this mad identity crisis i didn't have a fucking clue who i was yeah. even my instagram at the time was called genghis khan <laughs> you know so it was like i didn't really know who i fucking was yeah. um and i was going through this kind of shift and starting to understand like what what do i want what do i really fucking want um and it was just to be free and have mm-hmm. flow and just feel still fucking good doing what i was doing because i love yeah. what i do I love, I love coaching i love helping people and i love by the sword die by the sword it's everything i think about from the minute i wake up to the minute i go to bed but yeah. i didn't feel what i was doing was sustainable mm. um so eventually we kind of got to a point um with doing all of that and i was we kind of hit the pandemic yeah you know c19 no covid came around and everyone batting down the hatches closed doors no pt no nothing but i had my own facility yep and <laughs> against government guidelines i became the busiest one-to-one personal, <laughs> personal trainer during covid so i became pretty much the only coach that was doing one-to-one yeah during covid Mm. and a facility and a gym and i rinsed that <laughs> for every fucking hour of the day i could yeah. and i would go and this and myself we had eventually moved from that flat just to digress but i'd moved from that flat amy had moved in because it was covid19 my mate came with me because we just had to get away from that so kind of like forced evolution to mm. me and amy moving in together my mate came with us and stuff but at that stage as i said i was rinsing pt yep I would drive down to North Ayrshire for like eight, mm-hmm. seven, eight in the morning start. Yep. And work till ten at night. Mm-hmm. One hour break in between. <laughs> and I would just I was doing about 70 PT sessions a week. Wow. Hammering it. Yep. Hammering it. And I eventually actually was working on my feet so much over that period of time. I developed a foot problem where all the skin in my feet like was dissolving. That's like it some was, David Goggins shit. It was like burning and like it, like my mom was like, you need to fucking get it looked at. It looked fucked, man. Yeah. It looked like I dipped my feet in water for like a month. That's disgusting. Like they were just like, they were eroding yeah. from the graft. Yeah, I can see the graft. Um, <laughs> so that was nasty, man. That was dead nasty. Um, what I do, I just kept working. Mm. Just kept working because I was like, can't let the clients down. Yeah. Can't let the clients down, but I was slowly getting more fatigued, more tired. Yeah. And I, I knew this was the first 
first sign of burnout for yeah. me. You know, I was starting to hit what we call the shit cycle mm. because I knew how to fix it. Yeah. But I wasn't going to fix it. my ego. Didn't let me fix it. Mm. And I was getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the shit cycle. And I couldn't escape because yeah. I'd created it. It was my baby. Mm. And I would do anything to keep it going because yeah. it was one profitable. We're changing lives and uh, it was mine. Yeah. I had it. I'd built it. It was <laughs> no one could take that away from me. I was like, this is I need to keep yeah. going. Um, and eventually, because I was just working so much and you know, I'd be coming home at night and, you know, it was the pandemic. No one was working. Yeah. I'd come home and see Amy and my mate, David, they'd be like, you know, drinking wine, having a laugh, had, had dinner and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'd be coming home like, a fucking zombie <laughs> like fuck like i was almost getting jealous yeah, yeah because they were able to spend time together and have fun in this beautiful new flat we'd all got with balconies and it was just i was like from the outside looking in my life was class mm. but from the inside living it horrible horrible yeah. um foot disorder stressed out my nap <laughs> yeah. stress pressured uh smoking weed to escape from reality just in a very toxic mm. mind state um and eventually and that was like that this was probably over like a, a 24 month period all of that just to kind of yep. encapsulate it i got to the point um was driving for one of my shifts one morning and i was just so tired i was like okay i can a wee i'll close my eyes just mm -hmm. a wee bit <laughs> I got, like it's a, it's a it's a scar not a wooden now but it's like i just closed my eyes a wee bit and i drifted off and i opened up i was like oh i drifted off again Drifted off again. I eventually fell asleep at the wheel of driving mm. and uh, got myself in a head on collision and completely flipped and wrote my car off and woke up down a ditch with uh, the paramedics pulling me out of it. Wow. And I remember that moment very, very clearly after coming back around, me getting out of my car, like stunned. Yep. Like, what the fuck has just happened? But running, just started running. I didn't even know, I didn't check, check myself to see if I was injured. I just started running to find other person yeah. that I had put through a crazy injury. It was, you know, we rush our traffic, yeah. you know, we're going at 60 miles an hour. And uh, he got out of his car, it was like, I'd hit like the, the front right hand side of his car. And my car was smaller yeah. and just exploded. Um, and I ran towards him. I was like, dude, are you okay? And he was crying and I was like all over the place. and. I was like, I'm so sorry, this time. He's just, I'm just happy to get home with my fucking kids and I'm dead. Mm. And then the shock set in for me. I was yeah. like, fuck. I've endangered somebody else. Yeah. Due to my own shortcomings. Yeah. Due to my own behavior. How I hold myself as a person, as a man, as a leader, as someone who's meant to be the coach, that the aspirational identity, someone people go to for advice, support, coaching, counseling. Yeah. And I was living my life like this. Mm. And it put me in that position to one, put someone else's life at risk, put my own life at risk. And that was when I kind of had like a, a little bit of a full circle moment, like a eureka yeah. moment. But again, my ego stepped in. It's like, fuck, I've still got a PT session today. Mm. So I was sitting in the back of the ambulance. I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Mm. Still got coaching sessions. I remember I was like, I'll be a wee bit late. Yeah. My mom and dad were like, you fucking, you <laughs> chill the <laughs> fuck out, big man. Yeah. You chill the fuck out. And you you come back to the house and you settle mm. and like behind it behind the closed doors i was like probably having a bit of issues with my relationship at the time i just felt very disconnected and i ended up like i ended up moving back to my mom and dad's mm. so after building everything and losing everything i was like and my mom and dad just moved and i remember just going back and staying like after the car crash lost my car had to take time off work it kind of like broke up with amy temporarily at the moment because i was just like i need everyone away from me yep. i'm just lost in this kind of horrible rut that i'd created for myself i remember sitting back back at their wee bungalow they'd moved from this nice big house to this wee bungalow mm. and it was a wee single bed with like fucking stupid little soft toys from like my childhood still in mm. this wee weird room just lying there like fucking hell what has happened man <laughs> <Yep>. like <laughs> what has happened to <clears throat> my life yep. over the last 24 months mm. and i just couldn't contemplate it i just had no idea what had happened it was like that it was like yeah. so fast it was <sighs> and like I, I, the more i speak about this the more the more times i've kind of articulated that story the easier it gets to tell yeah but it's like for anyone listening it's like you need to fucking pay attention to how you're feeling 
Yeah. <laughs> you really fucking do because see, I, I, I'm good at putting my blinkers on and just getting down and dirty with it. Yeah. But that was the first taste of my own medicine mm-hmm. of pushing the boat out to too far to the point I couldn't swim or I was drowning or fly too close to the sun like fucking Icarus. Yeah. You know, I was just burning myself so, so far out and mentally it took it took months if not years to recover from that yeah that's, that, that, that's where i wanted to take it was too so many places we can take this mate first of all we'll, we'll start with that like how the fuck did you get because i think that's where see when you hit like such a peak and then you come back down and you're you're below where you started on that peak journey yeah it's like at that point it's like you couldn't imagine your life any worse what was the steps thought process like how did you even navigate around that mate it was hard man um because there, there was a lot of moving parts at that time in my life like because it was the pandemic my brother just moved home from london you know I'd, I'd not lived with him in seven years he'd been a musician um down there so it was it was great having him back but he 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 was like i want to be a coach and he came back and he saw the state of me yeah he was like i even want to fucking want to do this <laughs> um and then i was also even just to throw in the, the bucket i was also part of like a what was meant to be the the best thing coaching company for an online base at that time and i'd left that as yeah. well so i had all these things that people would have said to me like you're great you got the car the flat the partner booming business socials are bouncing you've got a mad zoom stretch class with over 120 members every single week are coming i was making impact yeah and then i just hit that fucking brick wall mm. and lost everything yeah because I, I couldn't even was waking up in the morning every day, feet were fucked, stressed out my night. I had like whiplash off the car crash. I was just spaced. Mm. Like I was waking up in the morning, like, whoa. Mm. And I don't even know what to do. Yeah. Because I was back home with mum and dad. Yeah. They just moved into this new place. And I was like, they were all getting their selves organized. And my brother just came up the road and he didn't have a place to see. He was there. I felt like I'd went from I was grown, but I went back to being 16 years old again. Yeah. I was like, fuck. Everything's gone. Mm. And I was like, as I said, dissing myself from Amy. So I was like, almost like single in my mind yeah. again. I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like, awesome. I just really had to take time. I mm. um, really had to take time there. And what I did, because I'd saved, I saved a good bit of cash from, um, obviously being the in-demand coach. Yep. And I was like, you know what? Well, I need to use this cash properly. Yep. Um, for me, and you know, watching social media self-improvement stuff you've got to invest in yourself got to invest in yourself so i did I invest in myself and um, i dropped like i think it was about seven grand on like a business and self-development course mm. which that just took all my time and attention and energy and effort like i yeah. just went all in on that mm. i went all in on that um and just started building my thing yeah. again but it was going to be completely different from what i'd ever done okay it was going to be something that was going to allow me to to live life in my own terms mm. so i remember jumping into that course because that, that was like the first time it gave me that purpose to start working on other things because i had this white space for the first time in a long time yep. a lot of thinking time um so I joined that and i remember after about a week messaging the guy that owns it and saying listen mate i've, I've, I've ran through all the coursework i've watched everything i've done all this and he's like fuck off like you've not implemented nothing though yeah. like i remember just staying up at night training after training after training watching all the content mm. absorbing it downloading the things doing the mind maps doing the i had i had, I had all this like i had like 10 notepads full of like my what my life was going to look like over the next yeah. five to ten years but i didn't know how to start mm. so just jumped and built the parachute on the way down and i launched my online program yeah. um just bootstrapped it mm bootstrapped it started marketing it um started telling my clients in the gym that this is what the the next move was going to be leveraged my in-person training from one to one to group yep. so i had more time back to focus on the online and just started building myself back from the ground up again and just recalibrated completely yeah recalibrated completely moved back to largs and uh, moved in with my brother held the space yep. just left glasgow behind mm. like that's a chapter done for now yeah goodbye sayonara see you later move back to largs and just me and my brother just started just jamming yeah i was mentoring him through his early like early phase of being a coach mm. while i was 
growing my yeah. next phase of coaching. Um, and that was an amazing time, yeah. hard time for us both because we were both mental health case baskets because he yeah. just left his whole life behind in London yeah. from being a professional musician to now being a coach. Mm. And he's five years older than him, so he was taking baby bro's advice. Yeah. So it was a big shift for him. Yeah. I could see that. But I was <laughs> I was going through the exact same shit, you know. Mm. I was fried. Like yeah. I, I think my ser- central nervous system probably for a year after that mm. was fucked. Yeah. Just completely fucked. Yeah. Um so it was hard, but I just I just closed myself off from a lot of things mm. and just went all in. Like you do best when you're looking to start something and just mm. hammered it and you know, within the first quarter of doing that, um, I'd had record breaking months in business. Um, I think we'd done probably like fifty grand in the first quarter from mm-hmm. launching this new um offer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, This is the thing. Yeah. This is the fucking thing. Let's go. Um and was it the thing? It was, but it wasn't it wasn't fixed. It wasn't it was very I didn't back myself, I didn't have the conviction mm-hmm. in it yet. It was me. And like, see when you're building an online offer, it's something that takes time to grow it. Yeah. When at the start, it was like, people were paying for me. Yeah. So I was just still doing everything. There was no systems, no frameworks. Every person that came on board was a new person coming on board. So it was like a fresh new everything. Yep. Um. So again, I started getting yep. back into the rut, the yep. work rut, um, which I'm really good at doing. And I just kind of restarted again, but with online, it just became the busy fucking fill again. Yeah. We grew fast, grew very fast. Um, still was going through some own shit in my head. So with like, obviously still smoking weed, morning, noon, night. Like, I was just fucking, like, that was my escape. Like, I felt like waking up in the morning. That was why I was getting up in the morning. If I could have a smoke and a coffee, then I could start my day. Yeah. And then I'd do a work block and then a break have that smoke and a co- like uh, a lunch or it's weird what did you have that most of the other person trainers slash coaches don't have because majority of their issues is that they don't have enough clients whereas you twice over like just got to a stage where you're like fully booked what were you doing during that time period that none of them were show up showing up <laughs> work like at the amount i've always have a lot of love content like i used to have a youtube for skateboarding mm-hmm. always used to post skateboarding videos content got a youtube account i used to always post lifestyle vlogs youtube vlogs i've always been present with content so when it came to instagram and market my coaching services i wasn't scared to come on camera yeah i wasn't scared to say what was on my mind all that being said you didn't really know who you were at the time because you're just getting started so you look at other people in the industry that you kind of like latch on to for advice support or even you know follow the breadcrumbs of those that are successful so yeah. i was like almost like a frankenstein of so many different people i didn't know myself yet yeah um, but I was still putting shit out there. I was still putting content out there every single day, twice a day, three times a day. Mm-hmm. And I was just, it was just attrition. Just yep. the more you put out, it was just going to wear people. Yep. And eventually a penny will drop and somebody will reach out. Mm-hmm. And then the stuff I was speaking about back then was very market relatable because it was like COVID-19, post-pandemic, how yep. to sort your shit out, love with more excitement, your mental health and all that. Because I was going from my own mental, mental health crisis. Yeah. <laughs> who's better to speak about mental health than someone going through it <laughs> yeah you know because the, the message landed because mm. i was going through my own shit yeah um so i was getting a, i was getting a lot of clients and maybe not the best fits for me yeah but even now to this day you know four four years on i've still got those clients mm. and they've seen me yep. the evolution the growth and they've grown mm. side by side you know but um it was a very very strange time man very strange time but for being being a coach to that period it was just do more than everyone else is doing yeah even if it works even if it's not working just yep. keep going and find what's find what's find, find what's landing and stick yep. with it but again i didn't really know it was landing i was just again throw shit at yep. wall see what sticks and i think it's just a game of playing that mm. until you know yourself 100 percent. there is one question i want to ask just going going back to it, it's been in front of me since you talked about it which is the car crash, the, the collision. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that now? I don't know. It's a weird one. It's almost like maybe grateful is not the right word, but grateful that it did happen. Yep. There was like the fucking punch in the face mm-hmm. that you needed. Yep. To kind of sort your shit out. Because that was, 
that was a very pivotal like moment for me having that yeah you know almost like being a guy in the past and i've done a lot of therapy a lot of mental performance coaching and like looking at who i was in the past i was i was always someone who would like cut corners and see how much they could get away with mm. in life yep. and that was almost like you've got away with enough yeah whammo mm. stop doing this yeah sort your shit out there's more to this game than just like getting the next client for the door chasing the mm. quick buck chasing this chasing that and just burning yourself it's like you are your biggest asset yeah and how you operate as a man is like absolutely everything across the board so see if you start drifting and dropping your standards and you you just disrespect yourself how's anyone going to respect you yep. and i disrespect myself for so long until that happened mm. for me to realize what the fucking purpose of living a good life would actually be if you choose to uh, wear a different jacket and yep. do something else mate so you like an aspect of because what i'm taking from that is that when you were showing up you were taking it and like that actually served you like pretty well from a business side of things as well yeah. so mentally you're finito or like you least it felt that way in both of those like you still showed up regardless personally also what you just said there as well in terms of like what separated you from all the other coaches you showed up mm-hmm. how did you show up in a way that actually impacted your clients so if you were getting one client more clients you were obviously getting results and you were obviously helping mm-hmm. people but you were doing that at like at such a like low output level almost or did yeah it was very out of integrity and it's mm. almost like you fake it till you make it though mm. i think there's there's two two things one i didn't back myself i've always been a very incompetent person from a younger age even in school and stuff like that like i, I, I was with the kind of popular crowd but i never felt part of it you know i was don't know how i was there <laughs> i just i was always in the shadows always in the background so even my communication skills weren't as good I'd always get a beamer. I'd always like feel clammy and antsy speaking in front of people. Even I just felt a bit off, man. Felt I never felt like a of value to someone. Mm-hmm. So even when I was coaching, that's why I over delivered so much. Cause I felt so undervalued in my own life yep. that I would just make the best sessions, the best engagement, care so much about that person mm-hmm. that it couldn't fail. How did you identify what was the best for? like those individuals like <laughs> just just knowing what their life is like mm. behind the session you know the the amount of mad clients i've had over the years like millionaires people running their own businesses if you're from the one-to-one coaching element like spending you know see when you've got a client that you know makes good money and you get them coming in five times a week yep. you get to know a lot about a person mm. especially that's over a year or two years yeah and the connection you build with them it's almost like it's not it's not they're not a client they're a friend they're almost like you see them more than you see your mates mm. which is when it's like it's mad yeah it's so i don't know like i, I knew how to train people mm. i know how to have fun doing it yeah i had a good uh mixtape selection <laughs> the tunes are always good yep. i got i got people feeling good in themselves that just sounds to me like you're you're actually being yourself there though i was but like see before they come into for sessions i'd be like this like mm. heart rate would be up yeah like before any interaction with anyone for years uh, i'd always get like the sweats like mm. like kind of mini panic attacks I, ha- I had that all the all the way through my, my fitness instructor career when i was doing like inductions i've had to speak in front of people if there was more than five of them maybe 10 of them i'd be fucking panicking have to mm. smoke a fag after doing it to yep. chill down like the thing was i think i didn't know myself because i was so out of integrity mm. like everything i was doing was good yeah. but how i responded physically psychologically to that and how i would handle that stress mm. was bad yeah. through escapism smoking drugs yeah all that kind of stuff you know so i was living a, a double life like in person grand great yeah. greatest guy about but behind closed doors who the fuck are you mm. you know like man in the mirror test yeah. someone who was put a cctv in your back Yep. follow you around the full day would they be inspired maybe not mm. you know and what um what does that look like now the, the man in the mirror test very congruent man mm. yep. feels good to say that yeah <laughs> but like I've, I've as i say like i've invested fuck thousands upon thousands last last year in the business year i, I didn't pay myself right i invested everything 
back into myself from mental performance coaching, therapy, courses, getting in the right rooms with people. All of that has given me more than anything because like you go on this path to self-discovery and you learn who you are, you learn to find yourself. And I think when you go full circle with that and you do all the inner work yep. and like I was like almost this facade for so long, like has a physique, so he must be confident. Yep. Whereas internally, psychologically, I was a shadow mm. of who I really wanted to be. Yep. But I think everyone will feel that way. Mm. Everyone's going to have to fake it till they make it or do something for themselves. Nobody likes themselves at the start. Yeah. <laughs> and I think sometimes you have to realize your life sucks mm. or you have to put the work on it. Mm. And again, I just realized that and I was honest enough with myself and I knew investing in yourself works. I knew therapy works. Yeah. And you just being honest about it. Like I remember the first therapy session I went to, I was like, I'm getting as much from this as possible. So I just opened the floodgates, man. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, shouldn't we save some of this till next session? I was like, I need it out, man. <laughs> I fucking need all this out, man. Because like, I'd never spoke to anyone. Yeah. Even with Amy, our relationship was maybe only three or maybe two or three years ripe. So it was like, I never fully let her in. Yeah. To me, I was always a, I keep trying to break up with her, put it that way. I was always trying to run away when something bad happened. But she kept coming back, which was very nice. Yeah. True fucking partner, that. Mm. Um, Why? Did you keep breaking up with her? Because, like, see if something was, like, not aligning with me mm. or I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. See, when I knew I was growing, mm. felt very uncomfortable. See if I was getting deeper into a relationship or deeper into a commitment. Yeah. Like, nah. Mm. So I, I try shy off. But that's just, like, that's when you need to lean in the most with anything in life. Yeah. It's like when things are getting more serious. Yeah. How you buck up your ideas and go with the fucking flow. Mm. Are you shy away and hiding the shadows? And I'd, I'd be, I was sick and tired of doing that. I'd done that for too yeah. long. So I knew the more she kept showing up for me, that was an, like, that was an insight. So for me to realize I can keep showing up for myself. Yeah. And how did Amy feel during that time period? You were talking to her <laughs> I, I think I put her through hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think I put her through hell because Amy was like a pioneer in my growth. Mm. You know, she gave me an iPhone. Mm. When I had a, I think the, the phone at the time was a, Huawei or something, <laughs> Huawei. Nobody's fucking doing bits on that, you know. I had a Huawei phone or something, and I had a wee HP laptop. Mm. She gave me a MacBook. She gave me Microsoft Word. She gave me a phone. She, she literally just gave me like the platform, yep. and she didn't let me off of my own shit. Mm. She was like the the first real accountability I'd ever had. So she really gave me the start, the foot yep. in the door, almost, mm. which is like unbelievably grateful. Yeah. But still, even when the relationship started to progress, I would try to break up with her because yeah. <laughs> I was being a fucking little baby bitch, <laughs> you know? Did you ever find out where that was actually coming from? Like the root of that? <laughs> just insecurities, man. Mm -hmm. I, think, like, I worked through this with like my therapist and it was just, it's just deep insecurities of not being, you don't love yourself. No one else is going to love you. Mm -hmm. And I, I hated myself. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't willing to let anyone else see the real me. Yeah. Because I felt like if they saw the real me, then that would be another person that wouldn't like mm -hmm. me, even though it's just me that doesn't like myself. I have good friends, you know. Yeah. I'm sure they've never thought that way about me, but it's just like, it's in the old grey matter, you know, it's in your head. What would be your advice to someone that feels similar? Ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, <laughs> ask yourself, is it worth holding yourself back that way? Mm. You know, because I think you're allowed to do it for a wee bit. Yep. And that's that's what I said earlier, you're cutting corners. You're allowed to do it for a wee bit. But how long can you stay in your wee comfort zone before that gets uncomfortable? Yeah. And then when that comfort zone becomes uncomfortable, damn, you know, you need to fucking change. Because mm. that's what happened to me. I got so comfortable with my own bullshit that some, I, I had to crash a car and get a fucking disease in my feet to realize it. Yeah. And burn out completely, scramble my own mental health and just, drive myself into the ground for me to realize, you know what, I can't keep doing this. Kind of like I spoke about it too many times, it's like <clears throat> the hardship itself is required in order to cherish the shit of the other side. Um, I'm okay. sure you would have seen it, man. You've seen plenty of people that have scaled coaching businesses up to 10k per month, living some sort of lavish life, but because the pain wasn't so bad beforehand, it doesn't actually feel that good. Yeah. And um, they get a bit bored and kind of like, want to try something else, dip toes elsewhere. And it's like if the hardship was so bad, 
when you actually started to to get to a level where you're actually happy and you're you're generating a shit ton of money um it feels fucking worth it um, and it also feels like you actually cherish it and actually use it for good um mm-hmm. people like amy for example were able to yeah. And obviously Amy works with you now, which is almost like a full circle moment from her like giving you the iPhone to now she's part of the business, yeah. um, which is fucking amazing, mate. That just kind of brings me on to the, one of the things that I wanted to speak to you about was the the hiring side of things. Obviously you went, you're scaling now the peak performance projects at like what, I think you said 85 clients, just shy of 100. Um, by the sounds of things with the way in which Mark is working and, yeah. and Adam and stuff, that's going to hit pretty damn soon. Um, one of the things I found interesting, I've took a lot of value from just from being friends with you is I was going to say pricing structure. That was one of the things that you helped with in the very beginning for me, but also like you opened my eyes to like what it was like to hire. Like, even when you first initially hired Adam, it was like part time client success manager. And I was like, how can you like hire someone part time to do that said thing? And you just like opened my mind completely to that when it was like you took such a to me, an unconventional route of hiring, where in my mind, the conventional way was you need to hire your first one full time. Um, mm. It needs to be for X amount of salary. It needs to be doing a specific role. It needs to be a VA. It needs to be like all that shit where it's like you hear it all. Whereas you yeah. took such an unconventional route. Was that through advice or was that just through your own? It's, through, it's through feel. Mm. You know, it's like you build an element of trust with people. Yep. And you get to know, like, I, I've known Adam for years now. And having him come on board, like I had to take him through the ranks first. Yep. I had to sell him into the program. I had to coach him through the program. I had to deliver him a world class result. I had to kind of elevate him to want more from yep. himself until we jumped on what we call a hot seat, mm-hmm. which is like what we run with our clients sometimes. And I was like, So what's next for you? And he's like, I'd love to be maybe doing something like you, PT and helping doing this. And I was like, Great, like, well, moment you're in. You know, mm-hmm. I like instantly made my mind up in that call. I was like, We can. What do I hate doing in the business? Yeah. Right. My, well, not hate, but my energy and attention is best spent on like one to one fulfillment yep. and growing the mm-hmm. business, marketing, that kind of stuff. Adam can pick up a little bit of slack. Well, if it's 15%, 20%, it gives him a platform yep. to be a leader, to step out of his comfort zone and do something that's going to provide more value for my clients. Yeah. Because then there's two brains, not just one. Yeah. You know, um, very similar for Mark. Very, very similar. When, when Mark came on board, like he, he's been a godsend to the business. He's probably been out of all the investments I've made through like mentorships, therapy, mental performance coaching, hired him own personal coach for like fitness. He's been the best investment I've ever made. Mm. One, because how it started, right? Like Mark was actually one of my first ever clients yep. many moons ago when he looked like a wee Hollister model. <laughs> You know, now it looks like you'd fucking eat Hollister models for <laughs> breakfast. Yep. Mark's a very passionate guy. We competed on stage many moons ago. I've seen his work ethic. He's just, it's just different class. And I remember I went and tied in with him. Um, must have been there early last year. Just for a catch up, yep. you know. Um, and he was like, Lewis, I'd love to pick your brain on. I want to start coaching. I'm in the fire service. I want to, I want to start coaching clients like you online and stuff like that. And I remember just sitting there with, with a coffee. And just watching him articulate things, speak about things, how passionate he was, how enthused he was about results. And oh, I have got I've got these two clients now, but their brain melts. It's like yeah. he, had, he had no systems. He didn't know how to coach. He could coach, but he didn't know how to run it. Yeah. And he was saying all this stuff. And I was like, just sitting in a coffee, just looking at him. I was like, you're next. <laughs> you're fucking next, mate. <laughs> and then I was like, I need, I was like, a week later, I messaged him saying, I've got an opportunity for you. I was like, I, what, what is it? I was like, how would you like to come on um, and work with me under me as my head of strength and performance for my clients? And he was, he lost his shit. He loved that. Mm. He loved that. And what did he love about it? Mark loves programming. Mm. Mark loves muscles. I'm at a stage now in my career, I've been doing this 10 years. I don't love muscles as much mm. and programming as much as I used to. Mm. I, I still do it. Like, yeah don't mind it but you see when you have hit the kind of end of your tunnel with doing the things that you've always had to do yep. and you're like for me i'm best spent in king mode when it's like how we grow the business market the business scale the business how can we provide clients more value yep. how can we give 
everyone a better platform to work in? What do we need to change? What's the next best move on the chessboard? That's what I'm best served. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm best served. And all the other stuff was weighing me down from thinking that way. Yeah. So Mark was buzzing. Mm-hmm. And within maybe eight weeks, I was like, you're leaving the fire service. Mm-hmm. You're coming in full time. Yeah. And we're giving you a full role and responsibility in the program as a head coach. Yeah. You know, completely. You can take your own clients into the business. You can coach my clients. Mm-hmm. You can have your own webinar every single week. You can do check-ins. Like I, I just duplicated me. Yeah. I just gave him everything I do yeah. and put it on steroids. <laughs> and it just, boom. Yeah. Like, it just went, because now we have Adam, we have Mark, we have Amy, we have myself. It's like four heads are better than one. Oh, 100%. And the bandwidth is so much better. Because mm-hmm. it's like when we have team meetings, I'm not just having a team meeting with myself now, yeah. sitting with my journal trying to work shit out. It's like I had different people telling me different things. Adam's very good at one. He calls me out. Yeah. He just, he's like my almost like self-corrector mm. on things that I do. Yeah. So he just tightens me up a wee bit. Yeah. Mark, he takes a lot of the slack. Yeah. So he, he is literally a full-time coach. So he runs fulfillment. He runs programming. He will do check-ins. He will do touch points. He's in all the WhatsApps. Like, yeah it's there and the clients love them as well mm. amy is like my life admin manager person like yep. overarching view mm. stabilizer from like all legalities and tax and all this kind of stuff she's just yeah a beast at all that mm. she also pretty much runs all my social medias as well yeah so puts me in a good spot to do what i need to do those that have a similar mindset to where you wanted to be, i.e. like in that kind of king position like you spoke about, but maybe not necessarily their business isn't quite there yet, but maybe they are they are quite not there yet or they mm. think they're not quite there yet. What would be your advice to them to take those steps to make it happen? Can I jump and build the parachute on the way down? Mm. You're never going to be ready for your first hire, but how long can you keep going on doing what you're doing until you reach burnout again? And I, I'm very now aware of what burnout feels like yep. and looks like. So... Anytime I feel any of those emotions physically, like you feel burnout in your body first yep. when your muscles don't recover as well mm-hmm. as you previously would have. You cut corners with nutrition, you're under, you're under hydrating, you're, you're either oversleeping or undersleeping. Like I notice that yep. very hyper aware of that. So when that happens, you kind of, you know, it's, something's going to go, then business happens. Then you start seeing like your fulfillment of clients, your connection, the way you articulate, the way you speak, that starts dropping. You need to be super aware of that. And it's like, how long can you go until something bad happens? So it's like, get somebody in to even pick up 10, 15% slack because that gives you 10, 15% more bandwidth back yeah. and space back, you know, for you to start thinking differently. Mm-hmm. You see, when you're always doing the do, you have no time to just like, <laughs> my mental performance coach said, we're not human doings, we're human beings. Mm-hmm. It's like, you have to learn to be. And when you're always, when you're always doing shit, you yeah. can't think. 100% man. can't think it's playing to win rather than playing not to lose is what yeah. I think from what you're saying like Big time. so when people get they maybe get to like 5k a month and then they're like oh like if I was to hire somebody that's like mm-hmm. a grand or like 500 like, and it's they they get so in their own minds rather than playing to win put it this way um last year was the best mom the best year we've ever had in business I didn't pay myself in yeah I make any money mm-hmm. I invested something like 55, 60k mm. into the business yep. to get it to where it's at now. And when you say into the business, what, what things are you talking about? Mentorships or like... In Mentorships, like, learning, wow. systems, staff, team, graphic designers, web design, everything. Mm. I, I kind of got to the, a point last year and I said, okay, you can, you can fucking wank over what's in your bank. Yep. But what's that doing for you? What's that doing for your clients? Because see, at the end of the day, you're, you're a customer service business. Yep. If my customers are not getting served, getting results and feeling good doing it, feeling seen, heard, having that space, feeling excited, I'm doing them as a service. And they're paying me their fucking money. Mm. So it's all good and well me taking their money, but if they're not getting what I truly feel is a good fucking service. Yeah. That's when shit's going to hit the fan. That's when your 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 growth is going to get capped. Because you'll gain a client, drop a client, gain a client, drop a client. Yep. But see if you're building a world-class fucking service. Mm. 
and your churn rate is like below four percent i was going to ask what are the signs of a world-class service well like just consistent growth yeah. all the time like we came, into the, we came into this year something like 42 clients we're up to 85 yeah we just tapped into the first finished the first quarter so it's like so last year i got to 70 clients myself mm. hit burnout fulfillment yeah. dropped didn't have any staff mm. i've redone it now yeah. now it's shit hot yeah I can sleep easy because mm. i know we've got the team the boys are there amy's in the back end mm. things are tight i've got great energy i'm present i can do things like this yeah i can i can focus more on the the growth of the business now and yeah. just making a world-class service and making it better and better and better mm. and when clients can stay and pay and have vision and feel part of the community it's, you, you, the thing is with our guys it's like it just feels different than the way i used to coach mm. like i felt like i was walking on eggshells yeah yeah i will i will i'll call my clients cunts i'll call them right out i'm a bit straight to the bone sometimes yeah i'm also there shoulder to shoulder with them you know be compassionate yep. enough to be able, really understand their situation but it's just it's it's unfuckwithable mm. like see when the sausage machine is is made yep. don't fuck with it yeah let it keep making those good sausages and that's what it's doing right now yep. like the rate of results we're getting the rate of fulfillment mm. what we can now give back to our clients it's like could never imagined it if it was just me still doing it and that's why having a team around you is so much better because that, that quote if you want to go fast go alone yep. if you want to go far go with a team mm. and that's that's one of my favorite quotes because now that i've got a team it feels feels right one of the things i've noticed consistently probably from people that are sitting across from me also clients you met people like lawrence for example scott um zero fucking complacency mate Aye. and that's what i'm getting from yourself as well where i resonated with the have x amount in the bank and it's like yeah i'm doing pretty fucking good man going get an ic car and all that make myself look relatively decent but it's like that does fuck all for the long-term plan of what you want to do mm -hmm. and what i've continued to see between all of you guys and maybe people at the start of the journey is that never satisfied with where you currently are is what i almost mm -hmm. see and as a result of that there's no complacency at all it's continuing to push and if i'm even thinking about your outreach your content that's continued to be like up here continue to look at opportunities continue to even do stuff like this yeah where it just looks like you've never put your foot off the pedal it's like you're allowed to relax you're allowed to have your holidays and stuff but i think it's like that it comes back to purpose like mm. i know what my purpose in this fucking earth is to do yeah <laughs> and i ain't gonna get there by like slowing down all the time and yeah. like one of my coaches says to me it's like if you're a formula one race car you only drive as fast as you can break so i plan breaks I plan fun and fulfillment i know the signs of burnout i know i know what to watch out for but when things are fucking good in business you keep on fucking going yeah and you 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 just you keep the fire burning like see having money is cool but putting money into the thing that's going to make you more money and impact more lives is even cooler yep. right and it's one of those things it's like you just need to keep you just need to keep it going mm. you keep it fucking going um because the life that you want to live like I, I i'm happy now i've got joy i've got peace but it's not the life i want yeah <laughs> i want this thing mm. don't know what that really is yet yeah i was gonna ask what that thing was <laughs> don't know what that is yet but i know if i keep doing what i'm doing the kind of these infectious behaviors that allow myself mark adam amy to really function as a unit yeah that'll crush through the glass ceilings yeah and that's not that's not just from an income bracket but from like a, a worldwide impact mm. bracket you know like we came into this year and we said 150 lives changed yeah not 150 something grand yeah, achieved yeah. it's not 150 lives changed yeah you know so lead lead with the the purpose behind what the result will be for someone else yeah. and what that's going to give you in return is the awesome stuff definitely mate there's actually a quote i read from um i read a book it was by the the humble poet i can't even recall exactly what it was the, the name of the book was but there was a part in it and it spoke about kind of went a bit through like selfishness what it actually is how it actually looks and a lot of people getting the definition of selfish essentially a bit wrong um but one of the things i actually took from it was can i articulate there'll be in which like if you ever went into something and you've wanted something for purely your own benefit i.e i want 150 members 150 clients to get 150 grand 
that is for you. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you go into it with your mindset, where it's like you are going to do that for them, transform their lives, the thing that you, the thing that these people want, you're going to get that anyways if you focus on the lives yep. itself. Yep. And it's like focusing on them rather than focusing on you. When a sales call doesn't go well, even if I look at like the, the start of my journey, whenever it never went well, it's because I went in with the thought process of I am going to gain X from this if I sign yep. this client, as opposed to if I go in here and I provide the the utmost amount of value as possible, that I know I'm going to change this client's life. Hundred percent. I've never seen it go wrong. Change your story. Mm. And like one of the, one of the biggest things, and I, I think about this all the time, like now having Mark on full time, he left his job as a firefighter, where he was risking his life every day, mm-hmm. working a job he was hating. He wanted to pursue a career in professional bodybuilding. He's got a partner. He's got a kid. That we never see. Yeah. Sleep was fucked. Taking him on board, paying him a full time salary more than he was fucking making in the, the fire service, yep. and allowing him to be great at what he's great at coaching. Yep. I think about that. I've, like, I've given him his life back. Mm. That's fucking massive. Yeah. And when I see Adam going holidays, it's like I'm paying for his holidays, mm. so he can save the money he makes from his normal job for the life he wants to live elsewhere, the house, the car, whatever. Because yep. he when he goes to Alicante for a few days, the boys I'm like paid for that. I'm yeah. like, I like that. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes with Amy and stuff like that, it's like we can go on a nice holiday now and again. I could buy her a nice engagement ring. I've always wanted, like, everything I do is for her. Um, it really is now. I've kind of allowed myself to realize that. Mm-hmm. Um, the things that she's been through in her life, where she's got to in her life, she's she's a tripper. Very yeah. good head on her shoulders. But I feel almost like it's my, like, humble obligation to provide her with the best life she is capable of living. Mm-hmm. And I'll take that weight in my shoulders. Because I know if I provide a great life for Adam, my family, Amy, Mark, I'll have a great life off the back of that. Yeah. It's like, cause it's, they're helping me as much as I'm helping them. And that greater purpose, that higher vibration, that higher frequency of living when you think that way, the impact you're going to have in correlation to <clears throat> that's your main thing, the coaching. Yep. That was just 10x. Mm. That, that was just 10x. And, People say, people messages all the time, like, even when Mark came in, even when people used to say, Mark, your call was so good. It was amazing. I'm like, why why, why is my, not, my call not as good as that? Like, it's like, no, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. That's what he's here to do. He's here to wow the clients. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I know how much impact he can have when he's operating, operating from a place of growth yeah. and abundance. Same from Amy, same from Adam. And it's like, they're on my mission now. Yeah. They've got their own vision for life, but they're on my mission. Yep. And that's going to just fucking be the, the way we've got to ride. A hundred percent, man. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's something that a lot of people have, like we said, that kind of like 5k to like 10k mark they get to where it kind of yeah. plateaus a bit. And then they, they're no good. I hope. <laughs> uh, get yeah. back there, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the last one's like, Lewis just kicked the camera. So, or, um, <laughs> yeah, Christ. we just had to take a, take a breath. But yeah, there's quite a lot of, see it all the time i even say it with like members within the network when they come in they'll get to a stage where it's like you know three to five k where the mad thing is as well that bracket is always what they aim for too because that's the covering of expenses and their own kind of salary to actually do what they want and then from there it's like i don't know where the fuck to go from here um i don't know who to hire what to do um what systems to build out and through being around the right people but also one of the things I've, I've consistently noticed is probably from working with Andy the amount of things that come into my mind that I'll sit on for a bit and I'll see it as potentially not solvable right now when it was just me that was just put to the side never touched ever again yeah whereas I'd imagine now with the team that you've got when something isn't solvable it's so quickly solved within the team environment oh uh, Mate, hundred hundred percent. It's like as I say, four four minds better than one. Yeah. And it's like other people from, you know, Adam's background, Mark's background, Amy's background. Yep. They've worked jobs I've never. Yeah. Thought they've had connections with people I've never had connections with. Mm-hmm. So it's like, when I put one of what I think think a problem is, because yep. I'm just coach. Like mm-hmm. I'm fucking old coach. At the end of the day, that's all I've done pretty much. Yep. So when I put that, and it's like they can come at it with life, mm-hmm. and I just it, you can dissolve it so much faster. Yeah. You know, but what were you saying about the money thing there? About like people coming in, they create these narratives in their mind that three Ks fit like the bracket or five Ks of yeah. things. Like they they only grow their identity to fit that. Yeah. 
the thing is one of my mentors once said to me it's like only earn 10k a month is selfish mm-hmm. just think about you had a business that was doing 30k 40k 50 a month yeah think about how many people you could impact from staffing to members to client fulfillment to the systems think how fucking shit hot it would be yep. like see if nike only made 10k a month yeah no one would be running <laughs> no one would have shoes yeah you know so it's like you do have to think bigger and mm-hmm. i think like allowing yourself to be confident enough to think that whatever you're building right now don't call it a hobby mm-hmm. don't call it a side hustle call it the fucking main thing yeah. and give that the the power yeah give yourself the power to allow that to be bigger than yourself because mm-hmm. when it's like you get a lot of coaches that call themselves like i don't know i'm gonna make up a name and butchers i bet there's like a pure coach out there that watches this it's like that's fucking me let's see let's just jimmy johnson pt mm. it's just jimmy johnson yeah you know i was lewis mcfarland coaching yeah but the first wee step was like call it the physique mentorship call it something mm. different when you're just you kind of box yourself in and you think it's just me it's only me and if i can pay for xyz that's fine yeah and you just you create a very low low surface level to kind of fill yep. and it's easy to fill that but mm-hmm. then you don't know what the next step is because you've outgrown yourself already yeah you just get you kind of get stuck in a wee box mm. i've sort of seen that happen like so many times and I, yeah. it's it's mad because people just simply don't know they don't know what they don't know so it's like where do they actually go from from there um obviously with the mentorships and all the stuff that you have invested in curious to dive a little bit into that in terms of like you've kind of gave us a good few already but what are some of the greatest lessons that you've learned through those mentorships mm. well i'm actually going to be speaking uh next week um a mastermind but you got a fucking market like your life depends on it mm. like there's a gun to your head like see when things are good like as i've said before things are good keep them fucking going mm. if you reach a, a natural cycle of business where things naturally simmer down where maybe it's the time of year the season rest with that yeah pull back with that but always with your marketing if somebody's zigging and there's other people doing similar things to you you zag yeah. go the exact opposite way and market harder because mm. you need to always have even if you're not taking clients on have a consistent engagement pulse of clients wanting to be on yeah and market like you've only got one client mm-hmm. and that's what bangs the drum louder you see when you get fat and lazy and you know backed up and you think you know i'm at the top of mount stupid now mm-hmm. i'm going to pull back that's when you di- that's when you die yeah that's when you get the churn that's when your your business fails that's when you slow down mm-hmm. hang on entre- to entrepreneurship and anyone trying to run a business is dangerous because you you're it's such a high octane all the time yeah. that the speed of how you think and what you want to do sometimes far outweighs what you can actually do mm-hmm. but staying on that track and and still keeping even if you're sprinting yeah. or if you're slowing down going to a light walk or a jog as long as you keep moving towards where you need to be mm-hmm. that's what's going to win every time consistently yeah. uh, consistency wins every time like you slow down you stop you'll never know what's on the other side of that yep. you know so you, you just gotta keep on fucking going and i think there's been so many lessons that i've learned but again one of the biggest things as well within any business people don't buy the business they buy the person so it's like you've got to be yourself yeah you gotta let people into who you are yep. speak with your story like a guy came on board with me the other day and he said um i really liked how you spoke with amy your partner mm-hmm. it's like family is a big thing for me my miss is the biggest thing for me so that's why I aligned with those values. So it's like, thank fuck I put that bit of content out <laughs> about my partner. Yeah. He's got me a sale. Yeah. <laughs> um, but remove that and it's like just being yourself. Every everyone else is trying to be someone else. Yeah. But no one can beat you at being you. Yep. So just and I, I struggle as I said, struggle with that for so long. Like future says, mask off. Fucking yeah. take the mask off and find who you really fucking are and be that mm-hmm. person. You know, even if you mumble your words, if you slur your sentences, if you make mistakes, that's fine. That's you. Yeah. Fucking embody that. <laughs> yeah. Fucking embody that. Show people that you're having a burger and you thought it was banging. <laughs> you know, don't think you have to be this finely polished person all the time. Yeah. You know, think of, like Alex Hermosi. See, all his front end stuff looks very highly polished. 
And every night he's just loves his partner eating fucking frozen yogurt <laughs> and like pulling funny faces and trading calves. Yeah. It's like that's what almost attracts you more because you're like, ah, yep. he's a human. Yeah. I want I want to I want to know more about him. Mm. Why is he not vlogging? Yeah. You know, it's like you just relinquish the stress and pressure of trying to be like someone else, but just be you. And the marketing takes care of itself. Mm. You can be aggressive with it because no one can outwork you from what you're now doing. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's like, it's, it's powerful, man, because a lot of people get in front of a camera and they think it needs to be a polished version of said thing. Also, I understand from like a a quality standpoint of like camera, call it like um, scripts, fucking um, like editing styles, all those things, they'll, they'll play a factor where it will come into, into the mind. But it's also what you've touched on is when you get in front of that camera, just being you as opposed to, I touched on scripts there, but even going like off the cuff because I know it's something that you switched up into the, the kind of content set of things where you weren't necessarily yeah. prepping that much anymore and I think a lot of people don't necessarily struggle to get away from it but they want it to come across so damn perfectly mm -hmm. when it's like with Hermosi I wouldn't be surprised if he just sits in front of a camera and he's just like right cool I want to talk about retention and he's just great at it yeah and he just does it like <laughs> there and then it's like he's not got a fucking script that he's going bah, 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 bah. look at the script uh, it's like yeah. it's just it's in there man it's to, fucking locked in to me that that's when i feel like burning out in business because of integrity for for months we were trying this content strategy and we'd write all these scripts and it would be like that you'd do a line look away think of the line yeah. go again and be t -t -t -t. see now that's i know what i want to speak about i'll write like two or three lines yeah camera on for 30 minutes and riff Yep. Just let my brain do what it needs to do. Because mm. see, when you're speaking, you get in that flow and you get passionate. Yep. You start giving other people an insight to how you really speak when you're in your zone. Yep. Your zone of genius. That's mm. that's the fucking shit. Yep. That's the real content. And you can get your wee sound bites from that. Yep. But I think like even when it comes to delivering to my clients, I just let it flow. I, yep. I'd never plan anything. Because mm. if, if it's overly planned, overly scripted, unless it's an educational piece and you're trying to actually get... Yep points but see if you're just giving them the giving them the good stuff you're g'ing them up yeah just fucking go yeah and that's when you start swearing and if you're a person that swears mm. they're going to hear that and they're going to know that and that's if somebody swears from the outside they're going to want to work with you because they swear like see if you are this airy fairy by the book clean cut person on social media when you're doing your marketing yeah and they come into your business but you're saying motherfucker and you're calling people bitches you're telling people to sort the shit out because you're not operating at the standard you told yeah. me you want to be when you said you want to be this kind of guy. Like, that's a, a clash. Mm. So be the one person. Don't spread your energy trying to be Tom, yeah. Dick, or Harry. Just be you. Mm. And that's going to allow you to get the clients that you want into your life because yeah. you're not having to be different people yeah. for different. And I used to be like that. Mm. That's why I'd have a very strange variety of clients, weird and wonderful people. There's an awesome quote that aligns with that, which is authenticity doesn't guarantee success, but inauthenticity guarantees failure. Yeah. And I think that's it, like through and through, man. If you're just trying to be someone that you're not, it's not going to result in anything, um, anything good, at least for a long enough time horizon. Um, I fucking love that, mate. Money's like, banging, man. Yeah, uh, it's fucking class. What is, um, obviously you said 150 lives, also what you want to change this year. What is the longer term, like beyond that? Where do you see it? Yeah, there has to be like a a grand vision, doesn't there? Like a new opportunity. Mm. New opportunity, we'll call it. Because I think everyone's got a life cycle doing what they're doing already. And there's only so long you can do what you've already done. And you're only going to get what you've always got. So it's what is it? We get to 150 or 300, mm. 400, 500. You end up just being in that like cyclical kind of rotation of just doing the same thing but on more and more and more yeah, and that, that'll get tired and maybe in the future I'll be the life coach yeah. <laughs> be a life coach and like probably, probably won't even fitness won't even be the vehicle mm. i'll maybe just be able to sit with people who are needing to work through other things yeah and be able to give passage on that mm. but for me to do that i need to live my life and i need to have these accolades i need to accomplish certain things you yeah. know that this year for i think for this year um because me and amy got some cool stuff coming up so in in july 
myself and Amy are going to Milan. We're driving from Milan to the Alps. I'm running a marathon through the, the Swiss and Italian Alps for like a big kind of fitness challenge this year. It's going nice. to be it's going to be class. Mm, up. Shins are sore already. <laughs> <laughs> and then we fly out to Australia for a month, then New Zealand for a month, and then yep. maybe a wee bit of Europe on the way home. Mm. So I think over that period of time, that's going to really give me an insight to how, what, well, because see when you're out of your normal routine, you realise what you value more. Mm. You know, when you start connecting with new people, seeing new places. I think this we landing pad, that three month chunk is going to open the doors to what the next creative piece has to be or what the next direction needs to be. Because yep. we're, on, we're on track numbers wise, client wise, results wise, fulfillment wise, everything's what it needs to be. But this is my level of thinking now. What's three months in a completely different country doing different things yep. going to do for the direction of that? Mm. Maybe we, I come back from that and I realize, you know, I don't want that. Mm. I want to half it. Yep. I want to scale back and work on X, Y, Z. Or maybe I'm like, nah, <laughs> <laughs> let's pump it up. Yeah. Let's let's double the team. Mm. Let's take it all the way to 500 this year. Yeah. Because it's selfish not to. Yep. So I never know. Yeah. I never know. Sometimes I think I've got the idea in my head it's like success is not only that kind of look about what you have but it's the feeling how do you feel mm. and i think the feeling i've created for myself now is what success to me needs to be based off where i've been before with the anxiety the depression the sadness the burnout the all of that yeah i think where i've got to now just i feel me feel calm mm. feel in congruence which yeah. is nice because yeah, i think a lot of people look at success as something that's like a finite like there is a thing that makes mm -hmm. it a success when yeah. i think it very much and carmosi speaks a lot about it being an infinite game like people are 100%. trying to play finite games in areas that are infinite um mm -hmm. you spoke a little bit about it and you kind of highlighted it already with with amy and mark and um, and adam but one thing that i've gathered from from getting to know you is how important your friendships are around you um people like jude fredman david mm -hmm. mcintosh what do those people mean to you? The bad mouth them. <laughs> you got your town on them. Jed, your content. <laughs> nah, th those guys are fucking top G's. Like mm. them a lot. Um, they came into my life in weird ways. Like Jude's almost been, Jude, Jude's been for it all. He's pretty much filmed the whole behind the scenes. Yep. Um, he's been like a, a therapist to me in many ways. Mm. And I remember one day, one of our first shoots, I took him down to my gym, that wee studio. And this is when he just started. And he yep. showed up with fucking three cinnamon raisin bagels with nothing on them. I was like, yeah, fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I got him to record 10 hours of PT back to back. <laughs> fucking hell, man. So, and I, I fucking remember lighting up a massive joint after that. And I was like, I'll get Jude to get high. He's like, no. It's <laughs> like, come on, man. Um, <clears throat> but Jude, Jude's been for it all, man. Um, and I, I respect him as a friend before but like yeah. business work mm -hmm. you know I, I check on it like the other day we were back and forth I was, was checking in on he was looking for obviously his pay <laughs> so we done fucking two grand or something but um, we were just chatting away just about mm -hmm. life how's relationships how's headspace how's fitness I was giving him running advice because he was like I wanna, I've got this runner's high I want to run every day I was like whoa 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 slow it down we'll work on this first do this change your training yeah. well, I like I like guys like him because he's outside the box mm. and I love people who I'm not saying I don't love people who work a nine to five but people who are on the same kind of playing field as me yeah. in terms of like you're an entrepreneur you're running your own business you've got different strings to your bow that aren't just you wake up nine to five you do the work you come home Netflix scratch your arse drive your fucking white BMW to work and go out and get fucking wasted in vodka revolution on the weekend it's like Somebody if you wore shadow boxing right now. Bro. I know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I get yous, dudes. Oh, yeah. I get yous, but maybe you're not my kind of people. Mm. Like, I, 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 lo I love people who are on their own fucking, their own yeah. frequency, on their own shit. And David Mack, a fucking quirkiest guy I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Um, He came into my life in a very weird way. Yeah. Very weird way. I think he, he messaged me one day and he's like, oh see mind that workout program you gave me years ago and i was like no <laughs> i think i sent him in the in the post a workout program that i wrote Fucking hell. when i was like 14 or 15 <laughs> um on like a4 paper like a five-day split handwritten mailed to him 
second class. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had no idea. Seemed to still have photos of it. And he was like, oh, do you want to link up? Do you, remember me? do you remember from the skate park and all that? I was like, I don't, mate. I was a cool kid at the skate park. I had no idea who he was. Um, we ended up training, man. Ended up training, getting jacked up in pre-workout, squatting, arms, lifting, just having a good fucking bro session. Mm. I was like vlogging at the time, so I've still got the vlog. Um, I remember he was sitting in my car after. He was like, I want to start a podcast and I want to chat about this and this is this, that and the other. And he was like, I wish we recorded this chat today because it was like a podcast. And I was just like, is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? Mm. But he was just on a different frequency, a different vibe. And he was just, he was chatting more about the bigger picture mm. of things. He was showing me all these wee videos he'd done about when he was going down to London, KPMG and going to Manchester. He was like vlogging it and doing lifting stuff. I was like, that's cool. Yeah, I rate that. Mm. Why is he not showing the world with this? Because he was just, he wasn't ready to, to yeah. do it yet. But now seeing what he's doing now, mm. he's very came into his own. Yeah. Um, and I just like people that have been in the same journey with they were there right at the yeah. start, the kind of grassroots. Um, so I've got a lot of respect for those guys yeah. because again, they're friends first, but then it's mm -hmm. like the, the bigger network, like David's, he's referred me tens, tens to twenties of clients, yeah. like over our period working mm -hmm. together, Jude, um, he's been there for all like my main events, Yeah. but then we've hung out behind the scenes as well. Yeah. And it's just great. Like I love that. Yeah, and I think those those sort of friendships, relationships, the reason I asked is because I know how important it is to myself and I think it's something yep. we unraveled with David as well on, on his episode that there's just a certain level of, it's kind of what you touched on, I, I guess, like with the white BMW and stuff like that, that especially through school, man, going through a lot of friendships um, that weren't fully aligned mm -hmm. and then when you come into entrepreneurship, it's like, there isn't you you think there's not many people because you don't know anyone just yet. Yep. And then those relationships start to build and before you know it, man, you've got people just like you said, David, Jude, um, amazing people around you that you realise are on not the same mission, but a similar mission. And as a result of that, the conversations you have. Um I know Corin Malone speaks a lot about like auditing the things that fuel you, not the things that drain you. And it's like every single conversation I've had with yourself, David, Jude any of the kind of clients that we brought on board it's like every single one of those chats fuels the shit out of me man like Big and time, i think man. when people don't have that um and how to find it is, is something that's is very important to unravel mate but i'm mindful that it's like half on already <laughs> barred, barred through this <laughs> we have barred through this. um thank you so much for coming on mate in terms of where people can find you obviously you've handled a lot about content marketing mm -hmm. um what can they find you mate Lewis McFarlane Coaching on Instagram and TikTok and Lewis McFarlane Coaching on YouTube and Facebook. Do I have anything else? Podcast. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> the High Performance Physique Podcast on Spotify. I've actually uploaded a fuck ton this year, so get on that. Mm. It's just, it's my journal. I just jump on and speak about. And there's some bigger ones that are like all HD and recorded, but you're on YouTube. Um, which are banging as well. So get involved. We'd love to have you there. Love that, man. Honestly, I fucking love today, man. We've just shot the shit like we had planned. Um, it's always a wee bit like nervy at the start. It is, mate. I guess it, we, we covered a, a shit ton of your journey, yeah. which for, for a lot of people that don't know you, that's fucking like perfect. Um, and then we just shot the shit on the areas that are really worth diving the, deeper into, mate. So thank you so much for taking the time today, bro. Honestly, it's been fucking oh, class. Um, if you're on YouTube, Make sure you subscribe, ring that little bell. We're uploading every two weeks at the moment. Lewis is putting his shades on because he aligns perfectly with what I'm putting forward. <laughs> if you're on Spotify, uh, follow, ring the bell. Like I said, these, se these, I don't know, these sessions, these podcasts, um, is something that I want to put the fucking foot down on. We've been stacking up on episodes, bring on some incredible guests, people like Lewis, where we're able to unravel some fucking incredible shit. So yeah, make sure you ring the bell on both platforms and thank you so much for listening. Boom.